It's New Year's Eve today, the 31st of December. It's a lovely sunny day and it's quite mild. Temperatures between 10 and 12 degrees centigrade, which is very unusual for this time of the year. But then in England, the weather is always changeable and we are very grateful to have this very uh, changeable weather. So I'll just walk you around the nursery to show you what's been happening because I'm going to take stock of what we have done during the past year and what we can look forward to in the coming year. So I'm here walking from the front of my house. I live and work in the same place so I'm very lucky and I'm just walking out to the fields because it's very mild here and lots of things are growing. We're burning some of the trimmings from the hedges and trimmings of the bonsai. But apart from that, there's not much we can do at this time of the year. We're looking forward to digging up our plants in February. We're going to hire a digger. Each year we hire a five or a 10 ton digger to dig the trees. These are all the trees that are due to be dug up. Some massive junipers, about six to eight feet high. They will be dug up. These are the maples which are growing here. And uh, if we look at some more of the trees, these are the large Arakawa maples in pots. These are 50 to 60 liter size pots. Those are my European hornbeams waiting to be air layered or trimmed back to be made into bonsai. It seems a tangled mess, but we're going to have great fun trimming these and making these into bonsai. So all these tall shoots, which are about, I would say easily 12 to 15 feet tall, they will be cut back to about six feet. And I always emphasize that the trees are so vigorous here, 12 foot grown in one year. These are this, just the shoots of the field maple. And we have such a lot of trimmings that we have to keep trimming them and then we burn it in our bonfire. And here we are burning our hedge trimmings. This is how we grow our trees. We love growing and of course this is a growing nursery. We just don't import trees like some other nurseries. Although we import some of the tropical and subtropical trees, most of the trees are grown here. So here we are, these beautiful native pines. These are Scots pines and Mugo pines, all in 10 litre pots, waiting to be shaped and wired and made into bonsai. The larger pines will be trimmed into garden trees. These are 15 to 20 foot high maples in 60 to 80 litre pots and they're going to be used either for air layering or for making into bonsai or for making into garden trees. I know you guys like to see all aspects of the nursery so here I am taking you for a walk in our growing fields. Although we call them our growing fields we have to lift them up from the ground from time to time because if you don't lift them up, they become too big and they cease to be bonsai. So all these trees have been lifted up at some stage and the trimming and pruning starts here. So we're going to have great fun shaping these trees. They are partly trimmed, these which were lifted two or three years ago, have to be now shaped into bonsai. A lot of people like to buy them at this stage because they like to complete the training process. Masses and masses of Bouvernensis pines. These are the dwarf Scots pines that we have here. Masses of European and Japanese larch, all with massive trunks. They can be made into bonsai or Japanese garden trees.
That's a huge Buvernensis pine. This is a cedar tree. We will probably use that for making to garden tree or we can air layer the top to make them into shorter bonsai. So there's no end of material. Everywhere you turn and look, there is a potential bonsai in these big trees. Many of these cedar trees can be used for making forest groups. So this is where the potential is. So this is how people view the nursery when they come here. And there you are, these are maples growing in the ground. They will be lifted with a digger. Some of them will be lifted this coming year in February. Others will be left to grow on bigger. That's the view of our guest house for those of you who wish to come here to stay and do workshops. We have this four bedroom bungalow which sleeps seven people. A lot of visitors from abroad, mainly your American visitors come here and stay there. So that's a lovely facility that we have. And just show you some of these massive, massive tried maples. These pots, that pot is 36 inches in diameter and that trident maple has a base of about two foot in diameter look at it every bit 20 inches to 24 inches and with beautiful beautiful taper this has been training on the nursery since 1990 29 years of training to develop the branches and the taper so this is how the taper is made I will do a separate video on how to make taper. This is another tried maple. When I imported them from Japan as trunks, it came to this height. And all this portion has been developed over the years to create taper. Constant growing and cutting to create taper. Same with that one at the back. There are so many. Look at that one with the massive hollow trunk. That's a tried maple. These are all tried maples. On a nice sunny day, I can take some lovely pictures. That's how the new taper is being made. You can see, and that's a massive horn beam at the back. It's a pity I'm not standing next to the tree, but they are all massive trees. I'm now just going to walk to the area where we go our hawthorns. Let's look at the hawthorns first. Oh, this by the way is a large Jacqueline Hillier elm. It's a Chinese elm, but the variety is Jacqueline Hillier, which was developed in the UK, named after a very famous nurseryman's wife, Jacqueline Hillier very very fine herringbone type twigs and again that tree is about four foot high and the pot is 36 inches in diameter these are all the ha uh, hawthorn they are white hawthorn and red hawthorn the red hawthorns have been grafted at quite a high point, so they will be big bonsai. So this is all the hawthorn that we have. We may have about a hundred of them. They're all grown in the nursery. None of this is collected. We don't believe in collecting from the wild. We just grow our own in this massive field area that we have. Remember, we have seven acres of growing field. The nursery is nearly eight acres in size. And this is all the hawthorn that we have. So you can buy these to refine yourself, but we also use these for refining them to sell as finished bonsai. This is how we grow our junipers. These are common juniper. 
three foot high plants that we grow for either making forests or growing into larger plants. They look very similar to the needle juniper that we have. And these are the use. They all have this winter color. Some of, some of them are still green. It's a pity we can't go close to show the detail, but many of these ewes have massive trunks. Look at this one here. Look at the trunk base of that tree. Another big ewe. These are all propagated from cuttings. These are San Jose junipers that we grow from cuttings ourselves. So these are about 10 years old. We don't grow them that fast because we grow them slowly. Another large San Jose juniper. Those are those Zelkova serrata that I planted in the field in 1986, 33 or 34 years ago. I planted 300 of them, but they became too big for bonsai, so I felled about 200 of those trees and they were just burnt as firewood. But the rest of them, I've left them to grow for amenity trees. So there you are. These are trees that got too big for bonsai. In Japan, the Zalkova serrata is used as a timber tree for making houses and also as street trees. And the Zalkova wood is very hard, so the straight columns of the Zalkova is used as the central support of the Japanese house. This tree, believe it or not, is a trident maple. It's about a hundred feet tall. And I planted this also in 1986 as a young sapling, no thicker than a pencil. And look at it now that particular tree. There are about six or eight of them, all tried maples, growing straight up. I'll now walk you to another area. This yew hedge, by the way, is the source of all our thick yew bonsai. We grow the hedges and from time to time we dig the hedges up because we don't uh, like the hedges to grow too big and inside the hedges there are some beautiful plants. This is the area where we have our English field maples. Field maple galore, look at that. And then more Bouverensis pines, horse chestnuts. These are the sticky buds of the horse chestnut. These are all the Bouvernesses pines that we have. I'll just walk through slowly to give you some idea as to the amount of pines we have. These are all in different stages of de being developed. And they've all been here for over 30 years, waiting to be bonsai or made into Japanese garden trees. 
So we enjoy making these into bonsai and people who want to buy them to train themselves, they're welcome to do so. These are the large English and Siberian elms we have. We have both varieties and they're being grown here and being developed. Most of them are used as experiments because we don't always just grow trees to sell. We like to experiment with the trees to see what happens to the trees. By doing certain procedures, we get a different result. So much of our fun in running this nursery is actually making trees that uh, are unusual. And we experiment with different techniques and also different styles. So this type of Japanese garden tree, these are large bovenensis. These are all six to eight feet high bovenensis. Pity I'm not standing next to it. That pot is every bit three foot in diameter. So that tree is about six, eight foot tall. And we use these for making our garden trees. The Islington garden that we made over the last two years were mainly filled with trees of this size and this quality. So you can see some of the trees that we have here. These are all these large Bovernensis pines, all in different stages of refinement, but they are just large bonsai. There's a big juniper there as well. Again, about six foot high. And we have great fun shaping and experimenting with them. It's another large Bovernensis pine. Another very large juniper. These are the rocks we use for our landscaping. That rock is about six foot in length. These are the apples from our orchard. No one wants them. We just let the birds eat them. This is a huge juniper. It's called Robusta Green. Juniperus chinensis Robusta Green. We're going to air lay this tree because the base is very nice. It's grown into the ground, so I'll have to dig it up. But we will air lay the tree first before we dig it up. This is another large bovernensis that we've been making over the years and I'm going to refine them this summer. Many of the trees that are already nearing completion will be refined. This is a very complicated San Jose juniper. Look at the trunk, look at the base there. So I'm now going to walk back into the greenhouses and show you some of the trees that I'm going to work on over the next couple of weeks. So here we are back to the main nursery and our Japanese garden area. Our ficuses are kept in this meditation center of ours and they stay here in the winter till about April time. When the temperature is warm enough, they come out from that center. Many of the junipers that we keep growing on to become bigger trees, we don't protect them at all. So all these junipers are left outside. They're securely alarmed here, but uh, they are left outside and they're not kept in the greenhouses. But here they are doing quite well. We are not worried about the frost. This is the 
effect of the frost on the foliage turns them brown but as I say don't worry about that and they're quite hardy in here these are all the maples we have literally hundreds and hundreds of maples in these corridors all in different stages of being trained We have one, two, three, four, five, six, about ten rows of maples, all grown from seed or from cuttings or air layerings on our nursery over the last 34 years. We sell some of them and of course we make bonsai from them, so they're all used to good effect. So you can see how these are being trained, all the ramification, that's a potential double trunk tree. These are all made on the nursery from nursery material. These are some of the air layerings. They didn't root. Not all the air layerings root in six weeks. Some of them take longer. So this one probably will take uh, a little over a year to make. This is a De Shoujo maple. And you can see where I air laid those two. They are the ones that I'm going to get rid of. But the main tree is here. And that's how the taper is being created. So if you come to the nursery, you will always see lots of different techniques being used and different methods that we experiment with. And again, this is an experiment on a large San Jose juniper. But we will refine this at some stage. And I'm now going to walk into the back greenhouse and show you what's going on inside the back greenhouse. The back greenhouse is our main workshop where we work on the trees. There are tridents there. There are tridents everywhere. So that big Scots pine, as you can see my shadow, it's huge, absolutely huge. That I'm going to refine as to a, uh, to make into a large bonsai. It's got all the taper, a bit bushy, but it will be refined to make into bonsai. So now we go into the back greenhouse. This is a magnolia air layering. In fact, there are three magnolia air layerings. I made these air layerings back in the summer and they were separated in September, October time. But they will be nice trees in due course. This is where all the trees stay here for the winter. Pines and junipers. Many of them are customers trees because many of our good customers leave their trees with us to take care of for the winter especially and in summer when they go on holiday they also leave it with us these are trident maples that are developed on the nursery and all in various stages of training so as you can see we are almost self-sufficient we don't need to import trees from japan anymore we buy the odd specimen tree or trees that we can't get like satsuki azaleas but as for maples, we are completely 100% self-sufficient. These maples are all trained on the nursery, all developed on the nursery. So maples are our forte. So you recognize some of the projects, that's the large European hornbeam project that I have been making and I will just show you some of the large trees that I'm going to work on over the next few weeks that's a large water eye pine that needs refining this Korean hornbeam is due to be put into a nice spot we've developed the ramification in these growing trays Many customers' trees are here for servicing. This is a massive 200-year-old 
Japanese yew that we imported for this customer about 15 or 20 years ago, so it's due for refinement. These are maples that belong to a customer. Large triple trunk de shoujo. And this is my famous split trunk maple that has come back for servicing. I will show you what I will be doing with it. I need to repot this tree because I haven't done it for a while. So this is due for repotting and trimming. This is also a very, very large Satsuki Azalea. I think the eight years you can add another 20 because I purchased this tree 20 years ago for him. And it's huge. It's about, I would say, 110 centimeter tall, about 120 centimeter across. And the trunk is in inches, I would say, at least nine to 10 inches in diameter, maybe even 12. I don't have a ruler with me, but it would be quite thick at the base. So I'm going to work on this tree. This is another old Chinese juniper that needs to be refined. The customers ask me to refine their trees as and when they want it. I don't keep pressing them to do it all the time because it's up to them to ask me what they want done. So this was a tree I imported again about 20 or 25 years ago. So these are all old friends. So there's lots of work ahead. So we will be working on these gradually. The trouble with many of these trees, the dewiring, there's a lot of old wire on the trees, can you see? Just taking the old wires off will take at least a week. So it's a very time consuming process taking the wires off and then cleaning the tree all takes time and that's before we start remaking the tree or reshaping the tree so there's a lot of preparatory work to be done before the actual restyling can be done to these trees so we can look forward to doing all this in the coming weeks so I hope we will have a lot of interesting YouTube videos for you so this is a view of what the nursery looks like at this time of the year. This is the pine that I did a week or so ago. So this is resting here. So enjoying a lovely sunny day at the end of the year. It's a lovely way to end the old year 2019. We are preparing for a harsh winter. We always dread the winters, but it's all part of the life cycle of the trees. These are our junipers overwintering here. So I hope you've enjoyed this little garden tour or nursery tour of Heron's Bonsai. One final glimpse of our indoor area because at this time of the year in winter most of our sales are of the indoor trees and over the Christmas period as you can imagine most people want to buy indoor trees 
I personally try to persuade them to buy outdoor trees, but if this is what the customer wants, we have it there for them. And this is a little bubble tunnel that we have here. And these are the orange bonsai. So on that lovely colorful note, I will end 2019 and look forward to seeing you in the new year. And as the Chinese say, the oranges or kumquat means gold, lucky symbol. And let's celebrate the new year with the traditional Chinese kumquat. Happy New Year.